Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist, practicing since 2010. I work in governmental hospital in Russia. Because you always ask me about methylene blue, especially we talked about mitochondria before, I decided to find as much information as I could, and here is my review for you. What is methylene blue? Methylene blue is a synthetic substance. It was first prepared in 1876 by Henrik Caro with the purpose to use it in the textile industry as a dye. But it found its place in other fields. For example, we know that uh, people use it to disinfect water in aquarium or to check uh, milk. Is it fresh or not? But a lot of attention to metal and blue is paid by medicine. For example, it uh, works as their remedy to restore normal hemoglobin. Our red blood cells have hemoglobin inside with their iron molecule. This iron molecule must be 2 plus in order to carry oxygen to bring it from lungs to the tissues so our cells can breathe. Due to different causes, in some amounts, some methemoglobin happens in our red blood cells and this methemoglobin doesn't do its function, doesn't carry oxygen for us. In some situations, for example, somebody overdosed the medicine or had some other intoxication, there are many causes, and too much methemoglobin occurred in our body. Our body enzymes cannot turn it very fast back into normal. And the person will breathe, but the oxygen won't be delivered to the tissues. And the person can even die. Methylene blue is an antidote to restore normal hemoglobin from methemoglobin within minutes instead of hours. Also, methylene blue is a, a nice painkiller. For example, before it was the drug called Hyophen. Uh, that um, had some combination of different substances, including methylene blue, and it was used for acute cystitis, when uh, there is inflammation and pain in the bladder. And it really helped to decrease pain, because methylene blue uh, is uh, accumulated in uh, urine. It is removed with kidneys. And because it's antibacterial and pain-killing medication, uh, it's a great choice for uh, cystitis. So, let's talk about general characteristics, about bioavailability, about uh, effects on the body, about preclinical, clinical trials, and about using cancer. I guess it will be interesting. Let's get started. First of all, what is the first mechanism of methylene blue? It is a redox agent and it can be a donor for electrons restoring normal electrical potential of mitochondrial membranes. It can improve the work of mitochondria and improve the production of ATP or energy. That's why it can be potentially used in all the diseases that are connected to uh, bad mitochondrial health. Uh, we discussed it in the previous video, for example, uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, like, uh, for example, even cancer. Next, it can inhibit MAO. MAO is monoamino oxidase. It's an enzyme that breaks down things like uh, serotonin. Increase of serotonin is the goal of many antidepressants. And that's why methylene blue can improve mood and can have some good uh, cognitive effect. I mean, improvement of cognitive functions. And of course, it affects uh, nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide is an important substance that uh, increases the diameter of blood vessels. It increases production of new blood vessels. It regulates the secretion of insulin. It regulates peristalsis of guts. Nitric oxide is uh, important for tumor growth, progression, and metastasis. Before we talk about different uh, studies and trials, I want to say a few words about bio bioavailability. Uh, now, and this time I have good news for you. 
it is actually quite bioavailable. It is well absorbed in the guts and it can even cross blood-brain barrier, getting into the brain and uh, potentially can be used in different uh, neural system diseases like Alzheimer's disease. And it is removed from the body by kidneys. Okay, remember that if it is removed through urine, it can cause some urine blue discoloration. And let's talk about first clinical trial. This is a trial on um, cancer patients getting uh, chemotherapy. Before we talked about mucositis or stomatitis during chemotherapy, uh, I have a separate video on it on different substances that can be used. And this thing is very painful. According to the results of this clinical trial, we can see that if these patients washed their mouth with the solution of methylene blue, it really decreased the pain. These are different concentrations of the solution. And this is without methylene blue. So you can see a significant difference. Especially it's also antibacterial, potentially decreasing risks of uh, other complications. I mean infections. Next, one more trial. They took 96 people suffering from intractable itching. You understood where. They were investigated. No reason was found. And what they did, they were doing injections around of methylene blue plus lidocaine. And in most people, it uh, produced relief of itching. And after three years of follow-up, most people remained symptom-free. That is very cool. One more trial on pain again. This is the um, back pain due to problems with the spine and injections into the disc compared to placebo led to good pain relieving effect. This is the article of 2024 uh, about the use of uh, methylene blue in septic shock. When there is a, a bad infection, uh, the bacteria or fungi are in the blood and they cause uh, the dysfunction of the body and the blood vessel uh, tone uh, just uh, decreases and the blood pressure falls down and this is connected to this uh, nitric oxide and because methylene blue can uh, decrease the production of nitric oxide it will preserve the vascular tone and prevent fall in blood pressure also it can be antibacterial so double action in this case it's injected into vein and of course we were talking about mitochondrial problems if methylene blue improves the health of mitochondria this may potentially be a good treatment option for diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer, obesity, fatty liver, etc. And we know that in preclinical studies, for example, methylene blue decreased uh, the production of this tau protein. These are different tangles of pathologic proteins that overfill the, the neurons, the brain, uh, it makes it like garbage area and uh, it produces dysfunction of neural system, cognitive impairment, uh, atrophy, and all the problems. Also, in Alzheimer's disease, we will see the decrease of energy production by mitochondria. And according to clinical trials of uh, second phase, uh, after six months of uh, administration of methylene blue, there was some improvement of uh, cognitive functions, of memory, of concentration, uh, here also you can see 321 patients uh, in, with, with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so it can be potentially used. Unfortunately, it's not still in protocols. We still need large uh, trials to understand better how effective it is. And of course, let's talk about cancer. You will, would be surprised maybe, but uh, this uh, substance is already used in official oncology but not in the way you expect. For example, when the surgeon does surgery, uh, removes parts, part of the gut with the cancer, um, the surgeon must understand which lymph nodes are taking lymph from this area of the tumor. And it's important to remove a good number of lymph nodes uh, to check them if there is any metastasis there or not. And methylene blue can be injected in the place of tumor and the lymph will grab it, bring it to the lymph nodes, 
that are specific for this area and uh, these lymph nodes will become blue and the surgeons will see where these lymph nodes are located to remove them. So this really improves the diagnostic effectiveness in such patients. Now, by the way, it's used not only in um, colon cancer, but in other cancers, for example, in uh, breast cancer. And what else? Second, second options how to use uh, methylene blue is uh, for photodynamic therapy. If you watched my video on uh, treatment of cancer without surgery, I talked about photodynamic therapy. In general, uh, to be short, uh, we inject special substance that is called photosensitizer that um, you can already guess synthesizes for light. We inject it into tumor or into vein. The substance will be accumulated everywhere, but then it will be washed out from normal tissues, but in tumor it will stay longer. And exactly at this moment we will apply special light. You can see, for example, like here, that will activate this substance. Here we are talking about methylene blue, that is um, photoactive. And it will produce free radicals to hit everything around, and because it's inside the tumor, it will hit the tumor. This is a good effective method. It's uh, well tolerated. It can be used for a very exhausted patient. Unfortunately, it has some limitations. It's usually not uh, curing cancer, and uh, the light cannot go too deep, not good for deeper tumors. But in general, it can be used. For example, for something superficial, like skin cancer, or like neck and... Uh, head cancers, even for breast cancer it can be used. Here you can see article preclinical about head neck squamous cancer and this methylene blue and photodynamic therapy. What else? Does it have any mm, direct anti-tumor effect? Well, uh, there is no clinical data on it, but there are potential effects. First of all, uh, it uh, because it improves the health of mitochondria, it may actually restore normal metabolism in tumor. We talked about it in details in Mitochondrial Metabolic Theory of Cancer, according to which um, cancer is caused not by mutation, but by a problem with mitochondria. That's why uh, restoration of mitochondrial health may be beneficial in treatment of such tumors. Second, restoration of uh, normal metabolism may decrease the production of lactic acid. And we talked about lactic acid and succinic acid in the video about succinate. That they may actually protect tumors from chemotherapy, radiation therapy and immunity. Meaning this is the other potential effect. And by the way, it's proved in some preclinical uh, studies showing that uh, methylene blue can help to reverse the resistance of tumors to chemotherapy and radiation therapy. They took the tumors that are already resistant to our treatment, added methylene blue, then added again this treatment, and this tumor were dying from these treatments again, meaning this um, methylene blue may make the tumors defenseless. Potentially, of course, we need to prove it in clinical trials. Here you can see, for example, uh, the study that methylene blue can help uh, to decrease the growth of pancreatic cancer cells. And there are a lot of studies like that. By the way, uh, methylene blue can be used for milk exam. If the milk is fresh, when we add some uh, drops of methylene blue, it will stay blue. Uh, but if it restores the white color, means that it's contaminated and it's not fresh. So, let's summarize the effects of methylene blue. First of all, it is antioxidant and uh, it can support mitochondria very important in low doses. Low doses means uh, half or up to two. Some say up to four milligrams per kilo per day. We just add several drops of water and drink it. I guess small doses are safer. In high doses, it can cause more adverse reactions and it can be pro-oxidant, meaning it may increase the production of free radicals and damage to different tissues. Somebody wrote about kidney cancer, that all these dyes can cause kidney cancer. Uh, there is no single proof of that. 
and um, I guess if it is used in small doses, uh, it's not really dangerous. Of course, high doses, it all goes through kidneys, into urine, and uh, of course it can somehow make the free radical damage to kidneys, potentially. But again, this is all potentially. Next, treatment of this pathologic met hemoglobin, a treatment of septic shock, uh, antimicrobial action against HIV, against uh, uh, resistant uh, staphylococcus, against uh, yeast infections, uh, good for potentially good for neuroprotection, uh, as an antidepressant because it blocks uh, monoamino oxidase, photosensitization, be careful go into the sun when you take uh, methylene blue, anti-cancer effect potentially, and uh, painkiller effect. Before we talk about adverse reactions, I want to thank everyone who supports the channel. Here's the list. And I want to thank all of you for being active, for writing comments, for sharing your experience. By the way, if you have any experience with Methylene Blue, please share. I always try to read everything. And of course, if you want to support us, please uh, see the links under this video. Or you can become our sponsor also. Okay, adverse reactions. Of course, if it decreases the nitric oxide that increases the size of uh, blood vessels the blood vessels will be more narrow and it will cause increase in blood pressure next skin photosensitivity and discoloration some bluish discoloration of course don't go to the sun to bright light next hemolysis that means the breakdown of red blood cells in some individuals who have genetic G6PD deficiency, it's a genetic thing, and uh, don't use it in newborns, it can cause lung problems and breakdown of also red blood cells. Next, some GI distress, the higher doses, the more chance, and of course blue urine because it's removed by urine. And I want to pay a little bit more time on the serotonin syndrome that is happening due to too high levels of serotonin because we block this MAO, the enzyme that breaks down serotonin. That can happen if you take too much methylene blue or if you can take if you take it with some other blockers of this MAO. For example, antidepressants. This is the big deal. Very dangerous to take several MAO inhibitors together. I would also pay attention to, for example, St. John's Ward or Passion Flower. I would pay less attention if you just get this quercetin, for example, from eating apples or from drinking green tea because it's a less concentration. And please pay attention on high tyramine products like aged cheese and cured meats. That is also quite important. Again, I want you to be careful because this um, methylene blue is not included in any protocols. It did not go through all the needed phases. It doesn't have uh, clinical trials on direct actions against cancer if you just take it. This is cheap, potentially very interesting uh, remedy, but we don't still have uh, enough information to determine uh, dosages and uh, schedule of intake and uh, what combinations are the best and everything may have some adverse reactions. And that's all for today. I hope it was interesting and beneficial for you. See you in the next videos. God bless you. Goodbye. Don't be afraid.